Welcome to Juan Francisco El Sopor America. I'm Olga Viso, I'm the guest curator for the exhibition, and I was invited by El Museo del Barrio to organize the artist's retrospective, as I've been working to bring greater attention to this important, underappreciated artist for the last 20 years. I'm gonna be joined in this virtual tour by Susana Temkin, who is a curator at El Museo del Barrio, who's been my collaborator in organizing this exhibition. And this is a project that surveys the brief yet impactful career of Juan Francisco Elso, who was a Cuban-born artist active in Cuba and Mexico during the decade of the 1980s. He was born in Havana in 1956, and he rose to international prominence posthumously in the 1990s, in the years immediately following his untimely death from leukemia in 1988. Elso made art that was humble and employed natural earthen materials, and as we tour through the exhibition, you're going to see objects carved in wood, modeled from earth, fashioned from paper, and covered in ash, wax, and clay. As we walk through the show, you'll see that Elso's sculptural practices examines the complex formations of contemporary Cuban, Caribbean, and Latin American identities. And in the artist's conception, these prismatic subjectivities are grounded in rich indigenous histories that have been materially shaped by centuries of colonial oppression and the transatlantic slave trade. As reflected in his works, which both contest and reconceive inherited narratives and mythological traditions, Elsa's America is a transnational and transhemispheric cultural imaginary that remains unfinished and still evolving. The ephemeral nature of Elsa's practice, coupled with the complexity of U.S.-Cuban political relations, has made the loan and display of his work challenging and difficult to bring across borders. Confronting these limitations, this exhibition brings together nearly all of Elsa's mature work, some 20 objects in total, including newly discovered drawings and works previously believed lost or destroyed. Taking a contextual rather than monographic approach, Elsa's prescient work is positioned in the exhibition at the center of the multi-generational dialogue of artists active in the Caribbean throughout North, South, and Central America. Elsa's Por América is the centerpiece of the first gallery of the exhibition. In 1986, when it was first exhibited at the second Havana Biennial, one of the first international exhibitions devoted to contemporary Caribbean and Latin American art, the artist's humanistic depiction of Jose Martí one of the country's most sacrosanct national icons, created shockwaves on the island. The sculpture embodies the rich fusion of religious traditions, cultures, and knowledges that have informed Cuban and Caribbean identity since colonization and slavery. Elsa's Port America has been described as the Caribbean Vitruvian Man. It's a potent humanist reading of Leonardo da Vinci's Renaissance figure of idealized Western classical proportions, which he recasts through a Caribbean lens. Echoes of the rich and convulsive histories that have shaped the Americas since European conquest and colonization are visible in the artworks that complement Elsa's Fort America in this gallery. The second gallery in the exhibition takes us back in time to the early 1980s and focuses on Elsa's early development as an artist. It includes a number of works on paper, photographs, and other archival ephemera documenting Elsa's early exhibitions and projects, including his first solo exhibition, Earth, Maïs, and Life, which opened in 1982 and offered a meditation on the primacy of corn in indigenous American civilizations. Born in 1956, just a few short years before the 1959 Cuban Revolution, Elsa was associated with the Volumen Uno, Volume One, generation of Havana-based artists who emerged in the early 1980s and were educated in Fidel Castro's Cuba. Volumen Uno was the name of a pivotal exhibition featuring a group of 11 artists, of which Elsa was a part and helped to organize. This generation, which is pictured in a vintage photo, includes Elso and his closest peers, among them Gustavo Perez Monzon, Jose Bedia, Ruben Torres Yorca, and Ricardo Bray. You will see examples of their works from the period, along with Elso's, in this and other adjacent galleries. While Elso never traveled to the US, 
His art from this period shares strong affinities with that of many African-American and Afro-Caribbean artists who similarly explored the legacies of the African diaspora in their art throughout the 1980s and 90s. Their works are also presented, including photos, sculptures, and performance documents by Albert Chong, Senga Ngudi, Lorena Grady, Michael Richards, Alison Saar, and Renee Stout, who examine spirituality and the politics of identity by indexing the markers of history onto their own bodies. Elso often conceived his art in series and formed sculptural groupings that together expand upon larger themes. In the four sculptures in this gallery that comprise Essay on America, made between 1985 and 1986, Elsa weaves an epic American narrative in which humanity is the key protagonist. Represented in the form of a carved wooden figure, the individual appears situated at the thresholds of life and death, gods and humanity, flesh and spirit, earth and universe. Elso died before he was able to complete his final installation titled The Transparency of God. Made while the artist was living in Mexico City, the series consists of three sculptures the hand of the creator, the face of God, and the heart of America. To create this sculptural ensemble, Elso enlarged these body fragments to monumental proportions. Their configuration of the space suggests the presence of a larger entity. As viewers enter the gallery, they are invited to gaze through the mask-like visage of the creator, which hangs from the ceiling. This hovering form is fashioned from twigs and bark paper, and the teeth are carved in wood and the interior of the mask is embedded with a ray of glass eyes. From this vantage point, looking through the eyes of the mask, the hand of the creator becomes visible on the right as it extends its reach to spark life and light into the heart of humanity. With this powerful gesture, Elso invites his audiences to engage with him in the act of world making, to participate in the reimagination of the American cultural imaginary. The image of the heart, which Elso titles The Heart of America, is a pervasive symbol in his art as well. He rendered it on paper and in print in an accordion-folded artist book. He also formed it in clay and fashioned its outline using straw, wax, earth, and twigs. In Elso's interpretation, the image not only references the sacred heart of Jesus wrapped in thorns, which is a prevalent symbol in Roman Catholic iconography. The bleeding heart is also common in Mesoamerican cultures. Elsa was drawn to Jose Marti's conception of America as a work in progress, a cultural imaginary that remained unfinished with the potential to be remapped and rewritten. In this more hopeful American pluriverse, the violent dislocations and discontinuities wrought by history are boldly reckoned with and reclaimed as in Elsa's last and final work, Caballo contra Colibri, Horse vs. Hummingbird. Here, the avian symbol of indigenous life confronts the horse, an emblem of European colonization. The bird's outsized beak resembles a weapon. In a new work specifically commissioned for this exhibition, Tiana Nekia McLaughlin offers a personal and poetic meditation on the power of memory and ritual that provides a culminating reflection on Elso's oeuvre and its potent legacy. Here, the violent colonial boundaries dissolve and give way to an alternative, non-conformist imagination of the Americas, still very much in formation. <laughs>